blizzard, howling wind, a thin tippy wall. You hear the roar, you feel the cold, and you think no one can sleep through this. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. But that's what we think looking back with modern eyes. For the people of the plains, the southwest, the plateau, and the arctic, winter was not a surprise. It was a test, a teacher, a constant enemy. And every tribe from Lakota to Cherokee, from Pueblo to Inuit, carved out its own answer. No electric heaters, no down jackets, no double glazed windows, just fire, just earth, just skin and bone. Yet somehow, they made it through. And tonight, we step into their world. The teepee looks fragile, just poles hide and sinew, a thin cone on a frozen plain. But hidden in its design is genius. At the very top, there are two flaps of hide, smoke flaps. Most people see just decoration, but to the Lakota and Dakota, they were survival slowly, carefully. They turn those flaps, shift them one way, and the wind pulls smoke out. Shift them another way, and the draft feeds the fire inside. The balance is delicate yet perfect. No chimney, no bricks, no iron stove. Just leather sticks and the wisdom of centuries. And it worked. The fire burned steady. The air stayed clean. The warmth stayed in. Imagine it. A family gathered inside snow piling outside. The flames crackled. The smoke rises. The cold kept at bay. Three things are happening at once. The fire gives life. The flaps guide the wind. The tepi holds the heat. One detail. One system. One chance at survival. And this was not luxury. It was necessity. Because winter on the plains was merciless. Without smoke flaps, the tippy fills with smoke. Without them, the fire dies. Without them, the people freeze. No flaps. No life. The genius of the tipi is this survival woven into design. Simple. Flexible. Strong. A small piece of hide that saved thousands of winters. The cold doesn't only come from the air, it comes from the ground. Silent, invisible, stealing warmth from your body the moment you lie down. And on the Great Plains, winter ground was merciless. The Lakota and Dakota knew the truth, insulation must begin below. So they built their beds in layers. First a mat of dry grass or pine needles thick enough to lift the body off frozen soil. Then the great hide of the bison, heavy and dense, spreading warmth like a shield. And finally, furs robes or blankets pulled close, trapping every bit of heat. No mattresses, no cotton, no springs, just grass, just hide, just fur. Yet it worked, a natural barrier turning frozen earth into a platform of survival. Picture it, a tippy filled with the rustle of grass, the scent of leather, the softness of fur. Children burrowed deep, elders wrapped tight warriors stretched beside them. One family three layers one simple defense against the cold. It wasn't luxury, it was knowledge. Knowledge carved from centuries of winters. Knowledge that warmth doesn't fall from above, it rises from below. That's the principle old as the soil itself. If the ground is warm, the people will live. If the ground is cold, the people will die. Simple, brutal, true. And that wisdom carried them through storm after storm, while the earth itself became their enemy and their shield. The fire was more than light. It was life. In the middle of the tipi, the flames never rested. They whispered, they cracked, they held back the dark. And around that fire, people slept, not scattered, not apart, not alone. They slept in a circle. The children and the mothers were closest to the heat. The warriors lay on the outer edge shields of flesh and bone. Every heartbeat, every breath placed in a living wall. It wasn't random. It was strategy. A circle is stronger than a line. A circle protects from all sides. A circle keeps warmth in the center. Three truths, three defenses, one solution. And so the night became survivable. The weak stayed warm, the strong endured the cold, and the fire gave equal share to all. No one carried the burden alone. The circle carried it. Now imagine the sound inside. 
The crackle of wood, the wind clawing at the hide, the steady rhythm of sleeping breath. Each body giving heat, each body taking heat balance achieved without words. Community itself became insulation. In the plains winter, there were no thick stone walls, no iron stoves, no down comforters. There were only people. People arranged with care, with trust, with purpose. One circle, one fortress, one family. That's the secret survival wasn't about the individual, it was about the circle. A ring of life glowing against the storm. And now, imagine yourself in that circle. Would you curl close to the fire with the children safe and warm? Or would you lie at the edge, braving the cold to guard them? Where would you place yourself? The desert is deceptive. By day, the sun burns. By night, the cold bites deeper than steel. And in the canyons of the Southwest families sought shelter, not in tents, but in the earth itself. The ancestral Puebloans built the Kiva. Most people today know it as a ceremonial chamber, but in winter, it was also survival. A kiva was round, subterranean, roofed with heavy timbers plastered with clay. In the center, a fire pit. Beside it, a ventilator shaft carved into the earth. One opening pulls fresh air in one small hole lets smoke out. Not by accident, by design. Slow the draft, feed the flames, guide the smoke, Keep the air clean, trap the heat, and let it stay. Three movements, one system, a hidden science in mud and stone. Imagine stepping down the ladder. Outside desert winds shriek across sandstone. Inside the walls glow faintly red. The fire steady the smoke drifting through its path. The cold cannot follow you down. No glass windows, no steel chimneys. No bricks of coal, just earth, just timber, just breath. And yet the result was warmth, warmth enough for children elders, entire clans. That's the genius of the Kiva, a sacred place, a shelter, a furnace beneath the ground. In the frozen desert night, the Kiva kept life breathing. The southeast was not the frozen Arctic. It was humid, it was wet, it was unpredictable. But winter still cut deep, and the Cherokee had their answer. They built the winter house, a circle of life, small and round walls woven from cane and plastered thick with mud, a roof layered with straw and bark pressed down tight against the rain. Inside, there were no windows, no drafts, only one low door sealed against the wind. Step inside, and it is dark. Step inside, and it is close. Step inside, and it is warm. Three steps, three sensations. One, truth. In the center, a fire burned slowly. The thick clay walls trapped the heat. The low ceiling pressed it down. Every ember lingered longer. Every spark stretched further. And in that warmth, families gathered. Children curled against their mothers. Elders sat close to the flames. The house was not big, but it did not need to be. Because survival was not about space. It was about heat. It was about keeping the storm outside and the family inside. Small, dark, warm. That was enough. And so the Cherokee winter house stood through season after season. A simple hut of earth and cane. A furnace disguised as a home. A little circle that carried a people through the cold. Picture a winter inside this house, small, dark, but warm. Could you last a whole season here with no windows, no space, just fire and family? Be honest. Would you thrive or would you go stir crazy? In the high plateau of the Northwest, winter did not whisper. It screamed. Snow piled, heavy winds tore through the pines. The cold settled deep into the bones of the land. And the Sequip PMC answered with the earth itself. They dug into the ground. A house half below, half above. The pit house, walls formed by soil roof packed with timber sod and grass. From the outside, it looked like a mound almost hidden. From the inside, it was safety. The cold clawed at the surface, but beneath the earth held steady, stable, reliable, warm compared to the storm above. The fire in the center glowed smoke slipping out through a vent heat spreading low across the chamber. No wasted air, no wasted energy. Think about it. Outside, snow drifts, howling winds, darkness. Inside, glowing fire, earth-scented walls, families breathing slow. The contrast was sharp. 
The difference was life. No bricks, no nails, no iron stoves, just a pit, just wood, just earth. Yet together, they made a fortress against the cold. It was simple, but it was genius. A shelter that used the ground as insulation. A design that turned nature's weight into protection. That's the wisdom of the pit house. You don't fight the earth. You live inside it. And when the storm rages above the ground, itself becomes your shield. In the Arctic, nothing grows tall. No forests for firewood. No cotton for weaving. No sheep for wool. The land is ice. The air is blade. The cold is endless. But the Inuit had caribou. And they had seal. From these animals came the greatest invention of the north, the parka, not one layer, but two. An inner shell of soft caribou hide fur turned inward, an outer shell of tougher hide fur turned outward, between them a pocket of trapped air insulation better than any cloth. Step outside into a storm and the parka holds, snow slides away, wind breaks on the fur, heat from the body stays locked in. No wool, no feathers, no factory, just hide, just fur, just knowledge. Think of it, each hunter wrapped in a living shield, each family dressed in armor made from the land, each body carrying its own fire. And this was more than clothing, it was survival technology, passed from generation to generation, perfected by hands that stitched sinew, softened hides, trimmed fur. A science of warmth without science books. No one walked bare against the blizzard. No one trusted luck against the cold. They trusted the parka. That's the genius of the Arctic. They turned animals into warmth. They turned hide into armor. They turned the human body into a furnace on two legs. So tell me, if the blizzard came tonight, no furnace, no heater, no modern blanket, which would you choose? Would you sleep in the tippy's firelight or in the Viking longhouse surrounded by walls of earth and timber, tippy? Or longhouse survival was never about comfort. It was about wisdom, about turning what you had into what you needed. The native peoples raised the tippy light enough to move strong enough to hold fire through a storm. The Vikings raised the longhouse heavy beams and sawed walls holding families and animals together in the dark. Two worlds. Two continents, one secret. Nature was not their enemy. It was their teacher. It was their armor, tippy, or longhouse parka, or pite house winter hut, or kiva. Each design carried the same truth. That survival is not about fighting the storm. It's about shaping the storm to serve you. And now the question turns to you. If a blizzard came tonight, no furnace, no heater, no blanket of down, where would you sleep? Would you trust the tippy's fire? Would you choose the Viking longhouse? Or would you build your own armor from the earth itself?